Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to prove that this sequence is a Cauchy sequence. So before we do that, let's recall the definition of Cauchy. So we'll say that a sequence A sub n is Cauchy if for every epsilon greater than zero we can find some positive integer, say n, such that for all little n and little m bigger than capital N, we can make the distance between a sub n and a sub m arbitrarily small. So how small? Well, as small as we like, so less than epsilon. So that's what it means for a sequence to be Cauchy. It means that the terms uh, get closer and closer together. So proof. So before we actually write the proof, uh, we have to figure out the proof. So scratch work. So in the proof, we'll have an epsilon greater than zero. We'll always start with that. And we'll have to find uh, n so that this inequality is true. So let's go ahead and write down that inequality. So a sub n will be just the cosine of 1 over n minus, and then a sub m is the cosine of 1 over m. And now we're kind of stuck. So the idea here is to recall a identity from trigonometry. If you have the cosine of u minus the cosine of v, that's equal to negative 2 sine, and then it's u plus v over 2, and then sine u minus v over 2. So in this case, this is equal to absolute values, negative 2, sine. So our u is 1 over n. So it's 1 over n, and then uh, our v is 1 over m. So 1 over n plus 1 over m over 2. And then here we have another sine, and it's 1 over n minus 1 over m over 2. So we've made some progress. The uh, negative sign is going to go away because there's an absolute value, so that's not an issue. And now we can use some other useful facts for mathematics. So first of all, we can get rid of any of these sine functions because the absolute value of sine x is less than or equal to 1. So we can drop whichever one we like. Also, it turns out that the absolute value of sine x is less than or equal to the absolute value of x. That's another very, very useful fact. So we need to figure out which one of these is more convenient, and I think it's this one. Yep. So this will be, let me break it up. This is going to be 2 times, let me show an extra step, sine of that, so 1 over n plus 1 over m over 2 times, and then absolute value sine 1 over n minus 1 over m all over 2. Okay. So the first one we're going to keep. This will be less than or equal to 2 times the absolute value of this. So absolute value of 1 over n plus 1 over m. It actually doesn't matter which one we keep. But I wanted to have the plus there already. And then this one we can drop and make less than or equal to 1. The 2's cancel, so we get absolute value of 1 over n plus 1 over m. Now we can use the triangle inequality. right? A lot of machinery, a lot of a lot of hardcore stuff in this problem. A lot of there's like a lot of knowledge <laughs> in this one problem. Um, the, the absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. That's the triangle inequality. So now we're going to use that. So this is the absolute value of one over n plus the absolute value of one over m. Beautiful stuff. And little n and little m they're they're positive integers. So we do not need these absolute values. We can drop them. And we want this to be less than epsilon. So now the natural thing to do is to force this to be less than epsilon over 2 and to force this to be less than epsilon over 2. And we can certainly do that, right? We can certainly make those uh, less than epsilon over 2. Here's how. Um, you just force it. So 1 over n less than epsilon over 2. Then you just solve for n. So multiply uh, by cross-multiply. So you get 2 less than n epsilon. 
Then divide by epsilon, so you get 2 over epsilon less than n. Reading that backwards, it says n is bigger than 2 over epsilon. So now we can use the Archimedean property to choose a positive integer greater than 2 over epsilon. We can always do that. So given any real number, we can always find a natural number that's bigger. So this is certainly a real number. Epsilon is positive, so it certainly makes sense. So by the power of Archimedes, <laughs> or the Archimedean property, we can choose a natural number. So that's what we'll do in the proof. All right, let's go back and do our proof. Fun stuff. So we start our proof uh, by letting epsilon be greater than zero. So let epsilon be greater than zero. And now by the Archimedean property, we're going to choose a natural number or a positive integer greater than, I believe we said two over epsilon. So we're using the Archimedean property to choose this, to choose this number. So then, for all little n and little m greater than capital N, we're going to look at the difference, right? Cosine of 1 over n minus cosine of 1 over m. And now we're going to use that, that trig identity that I'm sure you all have memorized. <laughs> you know, when, when you... When you uh, when you have problems like this, you know, hopefully, you know, you have resources so you can look for, you know, identities like, oh, I remember that trig identity. It's really easy to forget some of these uh, trig identities. So rewriting down what we have over there, I'm just copying it down. Sine of 1 over n minus 1 over m over 2. And then the absolute value goes away, so we go through all of this process again. And so I'm going to skip some steps here to make this video a little bit shorter. So doing everything we just did, dot, 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 we end up with 1 over n plus 1 over m. There'll be some new stuff that we're going to add to this. And via the triangle inequality, this is less than or equal to 1 over n plus 1 over m. Again, skipping some steps here. I skipped the step here. All right, so now let's derail a little bit. Let's, let's throw in some extra steps. We want to say that this is less than epsilon. Let's fully justify that, 100%. So since little n is bigger than capital N, which is bigger than 2 over epsilon, this means that little n is bigger than 2 over epsilon. We want to control 1 over n. What does that mean? Um, we want to make it less than epsilon over 2. So we have to solve for 1 over n. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. I'm going to multiply by epsilon over 2 and divide by n all in one move. This will be epsilon over 2 is greater than 1 over n. So 1 over n is less than epsilon over 2. And just to formalize this fully, let's, let's at least say likewise, little m is bigger than 2 over epsilon. So using some algebra, 1 over m is less than epsilon over 2. So it's nice to add these details uh, in a proof. You know, there's plenty of math books out there where you open them up and uh, stuff is missing. <laughs> so then, let's just rewrite it again. Cosine of 1 over n minus cosine of 1 over m. Well, we know this is less than or equal to, so skipping some of the steps we already did. 1 over m, and then here's the new step, 1 over n, we know that's less than epsilon over 2. So this is less than epsilon over 2, and then 1 over m is less than epsilon over 2. So epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2 is equal to epsilon, and the proof is complete. We have shown that the cosine of 1 over n uh, is a Cauchy sequence. That's it. Thanks for watching.